Yeah, also welcome from AB Nemo uh, side. Uh, we're proud to sponsor uh, these events for the second time. So in 2017, we organized API the Docs uh, together with Crowdix and the community as well. Uh, back then, we uh, just launched our development portal. Now we are two years in our journey. Uh, and of course, this whole event is all about uh, documentation and how important that is. Uh, but as, uh, as a kickoff, I would like to do once a short step back why APIs are important, and from there on we can learn uh, about uh, API documentation and why that's important. And I just shared some information uh, which we learned uh, across the two years that we're in. Uh, as Chris already said, uh, something about the, the building. This is the, the circle building. And the circle building is uh, a sustainable building in every way. And so what you look at is a building that has been built from uh, material that is uh, reused. And after this building is being removed, it can be reused again. Uh, if you uh, look at all the clothing uh, around you, that's jeans from Amy and Emerald employees. They all hand it in. And uh, from there, they uh, made the isolation of, uh, of this building. Um, and one other fun fact is if you go to the toilets, the water that you see is brownish. That's because it's rainwater. So uh, all these kind of ideas, uh, yeah, also the food that is being served today is different food than you would normally uh, get because everything needs to be uh, sustainable. So enjoy uh, the, the circle building in uh, the bank and, uh, and basically why do we do this in That's because sustainability is a big theme within the world and banks are stepping up in, uh, yeah, in their parts and influencing organizations to become sustainable. But in order to do that, you need to learn what sustainability is and how you can build buildings and how you can invest in these kind of things yourself before you can advise others. Um, so coming back to APIs, that's pretty much the same deal. Uh, you've got to learn first yourselves before you can do these kind of talks and then enjoy uh, learning together. Um, yeah, so short talk about what's APN then. I mean, Enro, for those of you that are not familiar, is one of the uh, three big banks in the Netherlands. Uh, we have four uh, pillars, so we have retail banking, private banking, commercial banking, and corporate and institutional banking. Just to give you an impression on the size of the company, uh, and also on the retail side, uh, we're the top three player in the Netherlands. 20% of the Dutch people are uh, banking with us. The number one in new market, the mortgage production, and the number two in Dutch savings. Just to give a general impression. Uh, then something about the Dutch people. Uh, Dutch people are quite digital, and you can see that in our numbers as well. Uh, where a lot of, uh, where in already a lot of countries, you see the bank branches going down and down and down. Uh, and the uh, Netherlands, that's especially the case. And also in uh, this overview on the left, you see that the Dutch people want to do self-maintenance uh, on their banking accounts, and, uh, and they expect a lot of digital experiences. So if we are looking at Google and Amazon, etc., we expect uh, the same things from, from a bank. And that's quite a journey. A question to you. Who knows what PSD2 banking is? Well, that's, that's more than I expected. Often when I ask this question, uh, a lot of people are not familiar with PSD2 banking at all. Uh, but basically it's a regulation from the European uh, Banking Authority and uh, they are uh, forcing banks to open up. So, uh, yeah, in, the, in the past, banks were closed systems, the data was from banks, innovation was always uh, done by banks, uh, and they want to get more innovation into uh, the, yeah, in Europe. To compete with China, to compete with uh, the US, should be a very vibrant uh, system. Also, 
If you are a German, you see that different techniques are being used to log into your banking account. So you share your credentials to a third party, they log into your banking account, and they use screen scraping to get the data out, and then you can do payments. <laughs> screen scraping. <laughs> in the area of APIs, you can imagine why Europe wants APIs to uh, be in place because it's more secure and that's why it's uh, becoming an important topic within banking. At the same end, you see that customers still need to get used to that they can share data, especially in the Netherlands, that's not uh, something that's currently uh, that customers are familiar with. <laughs> so, we need to open up three APIs. Account information service, where do you spend your money on, the bank balance, etc. And if they have that from all banks, then I can get very nice open views. Payment initiation, initiating a payment. Uh, if I combine that with a loyalty card from a supermarket, I can get a very nice payment interaction. And confirmation availability funds is do I have enough money on a bank account to do a certain action? Can I enter the train station, yes or no? And as I said, these APIs, all 3,000 uh, banks within Europe needs to open up. So a lot of banks are investing in developer portals and uh, APIs, etc. But uh, some banks are doing it just from a compliance perspective, and some banks want to move, move beyond and uh, want to get to the innovative side. And we are always aiming to uh, get beyond. <coughs> see which other kind of things can we do with this same technology. So we came from this area eh, where a lot of people are not going uh, anymore uh, and we're moving into those digital channels. So internet banking we launched in 2000, mobile banking we launched in 2011 and now you see that banks are launching a new digital channel which is API banking. And all these digital channels will exist next to each other. Um, so, and at this moment, yeah, when we launched internet banking, uh, no one thought that you would do banking via digital channels. I will always go to the office. That's not the case. When mobile came around, no one expected to do uh, banking via the mobile phones. So why would you do it? I go to internet banking. I don't need to use. Uh, I don't need to use mobile. Okay. Now everybody is using mobile and is not using internet banking anymore, or less. Everybody is saying I'm not going to share my data and I'm not going to interact with third parties with my uh, banking data. And I don't expect banks to do it, but in the future it might be the case, and then you need to be prepared. A lot of banks are not looking at that uh, point of view. So uh, Forrester already uh, yeah, predicts that about 50% of the banks will not uh, gain the advantage that is there if you really invest in this, uh, in this open banking, in this API ecosystem. And then it will become the area where you become a utility, uh, it's only about lowering costs, etc. Uh, and it's a race to the bottom. And you want to raise up, right? So, and maybe in Europe, we're already doing a couple of things. Uh, you can look at the ING Rabo Bank SMS accounts within mobile banking of ABN Emro. Uh, sorry, then uh, within a GIF app, uh, so uh, you want to categorize your transactions, so you want to see where did I spend my money on and how can I maintain my budget better. This is a capability that we didn't have in-house ourselves, so we looked for a fintech that had a nice uh, yeah, a nice system in place and that we can partner with. Also with uh, partnering up with these fintechs, you need to APIs to, to speed up. They expect to uh, uh, work well as well. Over here you see that Rabobank accounts are uh, being shown as well, just like Bank and ICS accounts. But like I said, we need to speed up and it's at a continuous pace, because those big techs are already showing what the future of banking could be with Apple cards, and if I go to Google and I uh, just talk to my Google Home, I get very different interactions as well. And it's APIs, APIs all around. So banks need to think 
not as uh, an ego, eh? everything is ours. We need to move beyond it from an ecosystem to an ecosystem, from centralized innovation to distributed. Everything is invented inside uh, to uh, invented everywhere, uh, networked in, uh, instead of monolithic systems. A different <coughs> mindset, and that's very difficult, but we're making steps. And often internally I'm then telling why APIs are important. Uh, and there are mainly four reasons why they are important. <coughs> it's to speed up your organization, disconnect your front-end from your back-end, to reach customers, also where you are not, so in digital channels of someone else, and then you can attract customers to your own digital channels, just like Uber is doing from the Google Maps uh, to, to the Uber app. You want domains within the bank to innovate on top of each other, then an innovation as a whole that should be uh, speeding up. Uh, everybody should build very nice interactions on top of each other. So that's why we're more and more aiming to, uh, to this vision, where we are going to empower internal and external developers to build the future of banking on top of APIs. But then you expect everybody to think in an API first mindset, and this is quite difficult. In a company, like I said, uh, going from offices and internet and mobile, and then now a new digital channel is coming around, uh, we learned over the years it's a couple of marathons that you need to uh, run. It's launching a developer portal, it's launching your first APIs, it's then uh, growing the, in the internal culture of building APIs, growing the mindset, the API documentation is important. Uh, and it's, it's a lot to, uh, to digest and to take in. So, Driving an API first, uh, first culture is important, delivering API platforms is important, but also all the processes and best practices that teams need to launch an API and to write documentation and API handbooks and documentation uh, guidelines. Uh, a lot of things to, uh, to work on. And also the APIs themselves. We say it okay, need to be business meaningful, easy to discover, resource based, easy to understand, easy from a consumer perspective, reusable, but it's easily set. But building that and how to do it is very complex again, because you really need to think of how is someone else going to use my service beyond what I can expect that they are going to use it for. Uh, a lot of people are not coming around yet, uh, but it's, uh, it's getting there, we're making steps. So, uh, we are also growing an internal culture uh, program where we are going to share the beliefs, why is API important, and then invest in why is, uh, so that everybody uh, understands how to do it, and we uh, provide them with handbooks and uh, and guidelines, etc., to do it, supporting with consultancy. And in the end, we hope that everybody wants to uh, go into that API first mindset, take those steps, and, uh, yeah, and enable others to innovate on top. The complexities that we see ourselves is really in how to build consistent APIs, that all your APIs work in the same way. Uh, if you have a lot of teams, uh, that needs to build those APIs. How to write technical documentation. We built software for ages, but we never invested in really writing proper documentation. Uh, so hiring the first API documentation manager was uh, very much a, yeah, a big leap forward. Uh, but now the, the culture needs to be grown around documentation as well. How to manage the life cycle, how, to, uh, how do you do dynamic deprecation, how do you support the users of your APIs, um, and when are you using APIs and when are you not using APIs. So, for instance, Kafka and uh, streaming, other competing technologies are popping up as well. Now, just to close down the talk, uh, we try to treat our developers as customers, just like we do in our branches. So that's why we launched our developer portal. Um, everybody can uh, go to the developer portal, developer.abnm.com. 
You see the APIs which we currently showcase, so the PEC2 APIs are around. Ticky payment requests are APIs that we have, and the foreign exchange rate uh, is, is there as well. And just to give a short example uh, on how we go beyond uh, PEC2 compliance. In the Netherlands, there's a big system. Uh, if I go out for food with friends and I want to split the bill, because we're all Dutch and we always want to split the bill. <laughs> uh, so, in the, in the past, it was always a struggle. How do you split that bill? Uh, then ABN Ambro uh, made an app, and now 7 million uh, people within uh, the Netherlands are using this app to just send a payment request via WhatsApp to their friends. They don't need to have the app and can say and then we create via the ideal payment system. And this is speeding up uh, the, the process of paying back uh, to friends in a much faster way, because normally I needed to go to my friends and ask it multiple times, uh, and it took weeks sometimes. Now everybody is dedicated to pay within a minute or a day. Uh, and it's more fun because of the giving. And a lot of companies are having this same struggle as well. Uh, so that's why we also find a lot of companies wanting to use Tiki as well. So next to the business app, where you can create that application and uh, payment request. We also create a portal. But there are always people involved. The largest amount of payment requests currently are sent via the Tiki payment APIs. Uh, where companies are using them for uh, web care purposes, or in the supermarket, or uh, for campaigns, or for donations. Uh, and a lot of uh, people enjoy, uh, not enjoy payment, but enjoy experience. <laughs> um, this one I didn't check. Uh, let's see if I can do the sound very quickly. Spawns, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's that's uh, that's a shame. I didn't check this one, but this is uh, the foreign exchange rate API. Uh, this is an important API for us as well. Uh, a lot of companies are exchanging money and always want to see at what time can I exchange my uh, values and my, my uh, currencies. Uh, and if I do that manually, then I'm always too late and I want to do that automatically. So there are already systems in place that do that, but an API is improving that uh, for customers as well. And then you see that customers want the payment API, so the payment uh, initiation uh, and the commercial versions of that. Combine that with the foreign exchange rate APIs and then automate uh, very nice systems for big companies like Argen or uh, yeah, a lot of other big companies want to use these kind of uh, services. So another example how we uh, go beyond uh, just PSC2 compliance and invest in new API propositions. That was the ABN Enro talk. Uh, now we are going to shut down with our stories and I very much look forward to learn from you guys how we should this, uh, do this properly. Uh, if there are any questions or talks, a lot of colleagues are around as well. Uh, and we are pretty much open to learn and uh, yeah, have a very good two days with you guys. Thank you.